When I was little, I never had to worry about how to get somewhere. I grew up with two parents and three older brothers, so somebody was always taking me wherever I needed to go. But one day when I was about seven, I needed to ride the bus by myself from downtown to my grandparents a few miles away. Mom drew me a map with a grid pattern of streets and a bunch of names on them, but they were just random names in no identifiable order for me, so it just made a nice tic-tac-toe board. On the bus, I watched the streets going back, going, going by, saw the one where I was supposed to get off, rang the bell and got up to the front of the bus, and got off at the next street. But in turning around in my seat and turning to get up to the front of the bus and turning to get off and turning as the bus left and turning and looking around, I had no idea which way to go. So I started walking and crossed one street and then another and figured I had messed up. So I turned around and walked back and turned again and walked some more and turned and walked and turned. Eventually, I found my grandparents' house. When mom asked me how it went, I said, okay, but I think I started walking horizontally instead of vertically. She laughed and tried to help me understand what she knew I had meant, but I was pretty clueless about the whole thing. Later, when I was in high school, whoa, when I was in high school, getting ready to go on a date, my first date to go pick up a girl. It was gonna be a trip of about 20 miles from out in the country through that same mysterious downtown, diagonally across one of several bridges. And I spent the entire Saturday looking at a map, studying it, trying to figure out how do I do this and memorize a plan. I gave myself twice as much time as I was supposed to need for a trip of that length, made a couple of wrong turns, crossed the wrong bridge, and meandered, but finally got to her house right smack on time. We went out and came back through that same downtown. And she said, oh, it's easy. You just go straight down this way until you get to the main street, which is 7th, and turn right. I was dying inside, trying to stay calm, but Somehow, she got us back to her house, and I even got back to my house. I don't know exactly how. So what do these two stories have in common? They're both about my terrible navigational skills and the power of maps. Do any of you have a map with you? Nobody. Okay, what I want to do is say, ask you a few questions and see if maybe some of you might have a map with you. And to do this, I need you to close your eyes. Go ahead and close them. We're going to ask some easy questions. Close your eyes. And I would like you to point to me. This is the easy one. This is the warm-up. Okay, go ahead and point. Okay, very good. Keep your eyes closed. And I now want you to point to the door through which you entered this room. Very good. And now here's the tough one. I would like you to point to your home. Okay, excellent. Open up. Now, what you've all just proven is that you all have a map in your head, a mental map, which is more or less accurate and detailed, and you use it to make decisions constantly. The first thing you did when you were coming into this room was figure out where do I sit? which was based on the layout of the room, how many people were already here, where your friends were, where you like to be, things like that. Maps are models that help us understand the world and make sense of lots of information. When I was little, I was both navigationally challenged and cartographically inept. I couldn't understand the world. It was just stuff everywhere. And a map didn't help me. I was in college before I learned how to harness the power of maps, and it turned my life around. I'm still a lousy navigator if left to my own instinct, but I understand how to use maps both to find my way 
and, more importantly, to analyze information. So what makes up a map? Think about the world in terms of like things. Roads, rivers, buildings, landforms, people, and so on. They all have a location and they all have a set of characteristics. Now think about representing a set of like things with a layer and combining some of these layers like a sandwich. And if you can do this in a computer, even a small one like a smartphone, you can use its calculating power to start asking questions across these layers. For instance, think about where we are in Southern California. Imagine you've got a map with elevation and roads and buildings and people and earthquakes over the last 10 years, like this. We're at the blue dot. Now, when you have this in a computer, you can look at it and say, ah, we want to figure out how many people, and more importantly, which people, live in a region that is more prone to earthquakes and might need to take some steps to prepare for that. And what's the best way for these kind of people to receive information about that? So you're already doing these kinds of explorations all by yourself, even without a computer. If you pull into a parking lot in the morning of a hot, sunny day, and you have to leave your car for eight hours, on which side of a shade tree do you park if you don't want to fry when you get back in in the afternoon? Or suppose you want to start a coffee shop and you want your place to be open in the morning as people are going to work and they tend to live in the south and work in the north. And there's an intersection with all four corners with spaces available, with different spaces at different prices. Which spot do you choose? There are actually students doing these kinds of analyses all over the country already. High school students are tracking invasive species and plant viruses that threaten crops in Hawaii. And they're mapping the spaces and the underground life forms in caves of Montana. And helping their school district in Maryland figure out where to put, where's the best place to put a new school building. Seventh graders in Arkansas, where they have lots of tornadoes, are analyzing the community and making maps to help people prepare for tornado season. And fourth graders, fourth graders, in the fields of central Washington are tracking these little horny toad lizards and providing their data to biologists who are having to modify their models about these creatures on the basis of what these kids have found. They're doing, just like adults, they're doing geography, which is really about answering three questions. What's where? Why is it there? And so what? They're doing just like Jane Goodall or Sylvia Earle or other heroes who are working to save the land and the ocean and the creatures that live there. Or like the United Nations that is working with maps to try to help resolve conflicts between warring nations. Or like the men and women who are struggling against weather and terrain and a raging wildfire that is consuming buildings and communities and lives. So whether you're looking at how many resources need to go where in order to support these many troops with this kind of mission in that kind of environment, or routing a fleet of vehicles, or figuring out how do we adjust voting precincts because populations have changed, or where do we put new homes, or just where do I plant a tree? People make geographic decisions all the time. If they do it right, things get better and you save money or time or aggravation. Sometimes just a little, sometimes quite a lot. 
If you do it wrong, things get worse and resources get wasted and it costs time or money or even lives. So now it's your turn to think about the future for each of you and for all of us. There's a world of good that you can do by practicing your geographic thinking. You can have a hand in creating new jobs, in saving energy, in providing food for people, in making places to live, in keeping people safe, in preserving creatures and fragile environments, in protecting the world from a country that wants to cause harm. You can do any of these things and thousands of things more that make a real difference in the world if you can work with maps, think geographically, and answer that question of where are you going? Thank you.